if you're using ChatGPT correctly, you can save hours and hours of research time. But here's the thing, people in academia really are only scratching the surface when it comes to using this tool. So I'm gonna show you today 13 workflows that you can use to make sure ChatGPT is working for you in academia. And here's all the little tips and tricks, let's get to it. The first thing you need to know about is ChatGPT memory. Now, if you head up here to your little face, my little squeaky forehead, <laughs> click here and then you can go to settings. And then in settings, you need to go down to personalization and you have this thing here, memory. You can turn memory on and off. But the thing about memory is if you're using ChatGPT, not only for research, but also for like personal things, or if you're sharing an account like I am, um, it is really sort of like tough to kind of like make sure it's always giving you the best answer possible. So what I like to do in here every so often is just go to manage memories and then, uh, you know, delete some of the things that really don't help it know about me. You can also just clear the entire memory, which I recommend you do sort of every so often. I think it helps it work better with the base model and it can be really challenging if it's got loads of memories in there to be like, oh, you're this person, you're this person, and then try to mash it all together. So work with memories, go in, clear it out sort of like specifically, or just go and change it all and clear ChatGPT's memory regularly, I would do that. And I think you should too, specifically if it's for academia. Now stay around to the end because one of the most impressive ways to use ChatGPT will be revealed. Ooh. The one thing I recommend you do is go in and actually change the name of each individual chat. So when you chat with ChatGPT, you end up with this on the left-hand side of all of the things you've done. You can see there's loads of things that I've asked it. I've asked it for banner design. I've asked it some Persian and Farsi questions. We've got time travel discovery. But what I recommend you go, you do is you go in and you rename it into something that actually makes sense for you. Because if you're using this for multiple things, it can get really hard to kind of like keep track of what you're actually doing. So one thing I like to do is put in um, personal. And so, you know, I can go in and put little tags like this personal and then this is AI hacks or whatever it is. So go in keep track of all of your chats by actually changing the name of them and you'll be surprised how easy it is then to scan through this and not sort of worry about things getting lost. But we'll talk about another way to do that in maybe an even better way later on. Stay around. One thing I recommend you use regularly is up here, temporary chats. So if you click on temporary chats, you can see that it says, this chat won't appear in history, use or create memories, or be used to train our models. For safety purposes, we may keep a copy for up to 30 days. But ultimately, if you've got something that you're not sure fits into something you've done in the past, use temporary chat just to see if you get a different response if it's not using its memory from the past. Now, here's the thing is, it will also sort of like not be used to train our models. So if you're not quite sure about the data you're putting in there and you want to be a little bit more careful, then you can use a temporary chat just to make sure it's not going to train their models. Um, a really sort of like important thing for a lot of academics. If you're not using it in university sandbox, you do have to be very careful. This is just a really great way of making sure that the data you upload isn't sent to train their models. Good. If you haven't done this, you should. Head over to your little face, here it is, bonk, and then go to Customize Chat GPT. So in here, it says you can introduce yourself to get better, more personalized responses. Now, you have to be pretty careful about this. It's not something that I've really enjoyed doing in the past with this, but if you have something that you're working towards, like you're a PhD student, you're an academic, and you're only using it for that, then you can make sure that it's using all of the important information about you to give you a better response. So if you go in here, you can see what should ChatGPT call you, what do you do, and what traits should ChatGPT have, and then anything else that ChatGPT should know about you. And down here, you can see we've got all of these options from where it sort of like gets information, web search, dial E, canvas, advanced voice. But you can see down here, it says enable for new chats. I leave that off if I'm sort of like only using this for one prompt. But if you want to make sure that all of your prompts use this in the future, you turn that on, click save and go for it. I haven't turned it on, um, but if you're using it for academia and research, I highly recommend you consider creating a little personal profile in there and I think it will give you much better results. Another little thing that I think is important for academia and research, particularly if you're uploading data and that sort of stuff, is head over to here and click on settings. And then down here in terms of data controls, there it is, you've got improve the model for everyone and turn that one off. Now you wanna make sure that your data isn't being sent to sort of like update the model, particularly in academia if you're uploading abstracts and things like that. It's just a little way to make sure that things are a little bit more um, 
not completely private, but you're just sort of like doing everything you can just to make sure that it's not sort of like sending all of that really important information and the peer reviewed stuff out into uh, train its model. So just turn that off. I recommend everyone do that because why not? It's there. It's an option. Just protect yourself, even if it's just a little bit. And as a little side note, if you really want to make sure that none of your information is being sent, you can build a GPT and opt out of training. So OpenAI has introduced a GPT opt out for builders that allows uh, builders to decide whether their proprietary data can be used by OpenAI for model training. So if you really do want to make sure that all of that information is staying with you, there are ways to do it. And uh, you need to build a GPT for yourself, which can be a little bit challenging, but we'll talk about how to do that in a bit. There's a way that I like to use ChatGPT that you can't do on the blooming desktop because down here you can see you've got voice mode, which is great if you sort of want to converse with it. But a lot of times I just want to speak my mind and have text given back to me. But there's no way to do that on the desktop, so you have to use your phone. So I like to go into ChatGPT on the app and I like to speak aloud. There's a little button that allows you to do voice to text and then I blah, 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 talk, talk, talk. And the great thing is if you're logged in here, it will turn up on your ChatGPT on your desktop so you can talk, 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 and then it ends up on your desktop and that's where you can kind of like get all of that information. So I really like talking my thoughts aloud into ChatGPT and I highly recommend you consider using a workflow similar because it allows you to brain dump and it kind of gets around all of those embarrassing moments where you're typing, you're like, oh, that doesn't sound very good. Brain dump, get ChatGPT to make it sound good and put it in an academic format. I absolutely love that workflow. Go check it out. I think you'd be amazed at all of the GPTs out there that can make your research awesome. Go check it out. So down here, you can see we've got all of these Scholar GPT consensus. These are ones I've used in the past. But if you click on Explore GPTs, I think you'll be amazed at the amount that will actually be helpful for your research. So all you need to do is go in. Maybe we can go down to Education. You can see we've got all of the Education, Lifestyle stuff. But if you want to put it in, um, let's have a look, uh, Research and have a look for all of the research GPTs. It would be amazing to me that you didn't find one in there that you actually quite liked. You've got deep research, and these are made by people that don't get your data, but um, this is just a really great way to go in and be like, oh, okay, maybe there's something that's already out there that's been built for me that does academia and research better than I could prompt it myself. So I really like that. So I recommend you go in, trial a few, and see if it makes your research a little bit better. Your favorite ones you can save on the side, and uh, yeah, it's just a really great way of not only using chat GPT, but also leveraging the expertise of someone else to get better responses than you could on your own. Boom. If you thought that was good, check out this one. If you're not using projects, you should. So head over here to this little section and you've got projects. You create a little project, bonk, click on that and you get project name. So you can put in whatever you want. But for academia, I recommend you sort of split up projects into like thesis writing, different papers, whether or not you're researching. Like this could be a project for um, finding literature on a certain topic. Because once you've created a project, you click on it and then you get a load of other options you don't get in the normal kind of GPT. Like this, for example, you can add files. Chats in this project can access this file content. So you can upload some files. Like it could be papers that you found. If you're working on a peer reviewed paper yourself and you've got a reference list, put those files in there and it can start using those and work with you and have all of that knowledge in its database. And then we've also got this add instructions, tailor the way chat GPT works. You can see down here it's got respond in Spanish. That's no good for me. Reference the latest JavaScript documentation, keep answers short and focused. So if you're working on an academic kind of thing, you can say, make this academic focus. I'm using this uh, project folder to create a paper. So make sure that all of the output is suitable for peer review, that sort of stuff. And you can then create the custom instructions. And when you're chatting in this project, everything will be better than if you just use the base model without having it in a project. Make sure you create one for each paper, for each little project, each little sort of like task you're doing. You'll be amazed at how efficient you can be. I don't know about you, but I get really annoyed when I have to type the same prompt over and over and over again. It's really annoying. So I like to use a tool which allows me to use short codes to get a massive prompt, a prompt that would take me ages to type as well. So let's go check it out. So here you can see if I put in, for example, um, uh, title, I have stuff that helps me coming up with YouTube titles. And then I put in the transcript of the video that I want, but I can get all of this 
in TextBlazer. I love using TextBlazer. I actually upgraded to the pro version because I ran out of spaces to actually create more. And you can see I've got loads of them for different sort of things that I use. Um, and it's a real simple way to create. You just put in a new snippet and then you create the snippet, you create a short code, and then you put in your prompt. The first way I was using this is I was just typing in my prompt and you can see you can place cursor at certain locations. You can put in the time date. If you've got something on a clipboard, you can put it in there. So once you've paid for it, there's a load of things that open up, but I use it in a very simple way. I actually just put in different prompts and then I sort of like link that to a shortcut code and uh, super easy. It means then I don't have to type and type and type. And one of the most common ones I always use is read this and say red when done. Super simple and effective, and it's a prompt I use all the time. So consider using Text Blaze, and it's got a free sort of version, so you don't have to pay for it if I think you've got up to 20 prompts. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely love that. Go check it out. ChatGPT's now got a new updated model for its image processing. I absolutely love it, and it's super powerful for academia research because check this out. You can put in rubbish sketches like this and say, turn it into a graphical abstract and it can do something like this. Is this perfect? No, but go check out my other video where I talk about turning this into the perfect sort of graphical abstract. But to get to this point, it was just one prompt and waiting for a couple of minutes. So I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, use ChatGPT visually. And I think you'll be amazed at the sorts of things that you can do, especially with this new updated image model. It is powerful. It understands all of the things I've written here and it created a much better graphical abstract than I could in the amount of time that it did. Um, yeah, really love it. And we'll talk about using this visually a little bit more in a minute because I'm starting to sort of use this more with my voice and visually more than I ever have before. And you should start considering the same too. Working visually with ChatGPT is super easy and it's a really great way of putting a load of information into its uh, knowledge base so you can then work with it in the chat. The way I like to do that is using a tool that's built into my browser. I use Vivaldi, but you can also just use other tools to grab a quick shot of the screen. So for example, down here in Vivaldi, or you can't see it, let's bring that one up. You've got this button here where I can capture page and I can get a selection or a full page. And then all I have to do is drag and drop and then say capture and it will go and get me a screenshot that I can use. I did it with papers. So I grabbed this straight from a paper that was on a website and I said, yeah, I want that. I want this one. And all I have to do is take those images and easily upload them to ChatGPT quickly by just clicking this. Bonk upload from computer and then I can go in and grab all of the screenshots that I need. You can see I use this so much. I use it for, um, you know, figures, for images, for thumbnails, for whatever I want. I'm just screen capturing all the bloody time. And it's one of my favorite workflows to use with ChatGPT. So I grab some information that's visual, I upload it, and then I work with that. So if you're not using ChatGPT visually, grab yourself a tool, a simple one that allows you to quickly grab a screenshot and then you can easily put that into chat GPT and uh, you'd be amazed at the visual capabilities if you like that go check out this video where I talk about the visual capabilities of using chat GPT it's only getting better and better here's a little quick one just make sure that your Google Drive is attached and you can go in here connected apps and down here you'll be able to connect Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. It's just a really easy way to make sure that you have access to files across multiple computers because Google Drive is available if you upload you know, something to the cloud. You can access it if you're on holiday, if you're away, if you're in a different campus, if you're in a different computer. It's just a really easy way to make sure you've got all of the files you need if you haven't connected ChatGPT to uh, your Google Drive or any other cloud device, consider using that. Easy peasy, go down here, click, connect apps, and then just click the one you want, log in, perfect. And I think this next one is one of the favorite ways that I like to use ChatGPT and you should consider using it this way too. Check it out. Once you've got used to the basics of using ChatGPT, I highly recommend that you head over to its playground and really dial in the things you wanna do with it. So if you head over to ChatGPT, this is platform.openai.com and you end up here. I'm in the playground at the moment, but this is the area that I really like because I can create prompts. I got real time where I can talk to it and I can tune all 
of the things here. I've also got assistance and I've also got text to speech. So where I really come a lot of the time is this prompt section because do you remember, do you remember just a moment ago I was talking about using text blaze? Well, all of the prompts I save in text blaze, which is this one here, I actually get from ChatGPT's playground. So once you've paid some money, you actually get access to this and it's this little button here that I really like. I click that bonk and you got what would you like the model to do? And then you put it in and you say, I would like the model, for example, to um, summarize papers for me or create content based on a brain dump for a peer reviewed paper. Whatever it is, it'll come up with a really great system prompt that means you are working the most efficiently you ever can with ChatGPT and that's specifically for an academic context. So here for example I would want to summarize peer-reviewed papers so I click create and then it will generate a system message for me and you can see here that I'm using this model and we've got all of these different uh, settings here. We can change the settings if we want, temperature, text format, max tokens, top P, we've got all of these things that we really don't care about. The only one that you should know about really is temperature. Zero is super not creative and up here two is very very creative so let's keep it where it recommended in the middle and then let's have a look at the prompt that it generated for me. So here it's got summarized peer-reviewed papers effectively maintaining the critical points then it's got steps that you would normally have to sort of like prompt the chat GPT sort of through and then we've got uh, output format and we've got examples so it just knows how you need to prompt any GPT or any AI and then you can test it over here. We've also got other things like real time and assistance where you can create an assistant. For example, I created here a PhD assistant. You can give it system instructions once again by clicking on that thing. We've got the model, we can file search, code interpreter, all of these things. And then you can create your very own little PhD assistant. And you can sort of dial in all of those little settings that really make a huge difference. So for power users, I highly recommend you head over to Playground and get those hands dirty. Delve deep. If you like this video, go over to this one where I talk about using ChatGPT's deep research for making your research easier and faster. Go check it out.